So you've chosen your breeder, you've asked to go on the waiting list and your breeder gets in touch to tell you that your puppy's been born, they've had a litter delivered, what happens next? It's a long wait till you can collect your pup at 10 weeks old and a lot happens in those first 10 weeks of life. So let's just go through really what to expect over the next 10 weeks. The first thing the breeder should just send you a picture of the litter that's been born um, so you can see the pups, um, let you know how many girls, how many boys are in the litter. Um, it's not the time to pay deposit. You know, weeks one, two are really uh, testing weeks really. You can have what's called fading pups. So, you know, there's no guarantee that they're all going to make it. So the first couple of weeks are quite important time. So it's not the time to pay deposit and the breeder will stay in touch with you and let you know how the litter is progressing. Um, most pups are born overnight so if, if you ask for a picture just be patient with the breeder because usually in my experience I think I've only had one litter that's not been born overnight and we're usually up all night delivering pups and then the, the breeder will spend, I mean I, I sleep with my pups till they've all got their eyes open so they'll spend a lot of time day and night with the new litter and um, so just be patient if you've asked for a photo you know they, they, they will send you one but it may not be straight away um, because obviously the priority is the newborn pups. Um, in the first few weeks of the life, so usually between 9 and 14 days, the pups will open their eyes. Up to that point, they're completely dependent on sounds and on mum finding them from the little squeaky sounds that they make. Once they've opened their eyes, they can then move themselves around and see where they're going. Um, it does take them a couple of days to focus. And when their eyes open, they can also hear at the same time. So that happens around up to about 14 days. Usually all the litter will have their eyes open and be able to see. And they also learn to stand in that time. Um, you'll see them sort of shaking on the little legs as they learn to hold the weight and then they tend to crawl around but then you'll see them take a little step so those first few weeks the first 14 days a lot happens in terms of them building strength to maneuver themselves and then eventually learning how to stand and up to two to four weeks this is when they start to get mobile uh, and they build the strength in the legs and they start to move around the puppy pen or the whelping box and learn to stand and take a few steps from not being able to do anything but push themselves around with the back legs, you know, within four weeks, standing up and walking around. So those first four weeks of life, there is a massive amount of development going on. And at four weeks, the breeder will then start to wean the pups. Um, you know, usually around about four weeks. If <laughs> four weeks is when we start weaning them onto solids. And usually after this point is when we allow visits. So those first four weeks, there's a lot of development going on in the pups. And then after four weeks, when we start weaning, they come on really, really quickly. But that's when breeders will allow visits. So some people won't allow visits. I usually have visits after week five, but it could be week six or week seven. So between um, five and week five and week seven is usually when we entertain uh, visitors to come and see the litter and see the pups. So what to expect at that visit? Well, the breeder first should welcome you with open arms and should allow you in to see where the pups are being raised. So you want to see where the puppy pen is within the home, um, you know, that it's not outside in the shed, that pups aren't being brought in from outside to show you. They should be in the home environment ideally and you should be able to see that and that be obvious to you. It's also imperative that you see the pups with the mum interacting with the mum and playing with the mum and it will be obvious now mum may be a little guarded um, she may even grumble at you because her priority she's got very young babies is to protect those babies and she doesn't know who you are and um, she will come round um, but she will be a little bit guarded on arrival you may even get to see dad if the breeder's got mum and dad as well and also have a look at their other dogs and what condition they're in and do they look happy and well adjusted uh, most breeders will have more than one have a knee so that's a good indication that you know you're happy with the home environment not just looking at the pups but looking at all the dogs as well um you should be allowed to interact with the pups and observe them playing they should seem confident after four or five weeks old uh, and start to be really confident in exploring their environment and want to play and want to interact and my only observation is if you pick them up and hold them high they can be a little bit nervous because they're not used to being at a height so sit on the floor play with them on the floor uh, and you know you should get to see really confident little pups and really playful little pups and they should make you smile i think that's the thing at that age they should really make you smile and they will really melt your heart so you don't want to be seeing quiet timid pups uh, if they've been raised in an environment with lots of people around they will be confident at this age 
Um, also, you can ask to see the parents' health certificates while you're on your first visit. You can ask to see copies of that. You should be able to see if they're a licensed breeder by the council, the licence should be on display. And if they're an assured breeder, the assured breeder certificate should be on display as well. And if they're not, then ask to see them because they should be out on display. And then the breeder should explain to you what the pup's daily routine is going to be like when you take it home. So that allows you to prepare for the, when the pup reaches 10 weeks old. So they should tell you about what food the pup's on, how much food that pup's going to take home, what the sleeping arrangements are. Is the pup going to be crate trained and would they recommend a crate for you when you know when you take the puppy home? Um, what socialisation the pup's had. Pups have a 16 week socialisation window. So those first 10 weeks are crucial. You need to understand what the pup has undergone in terms of socialisation and what still needs work to be done. And it's making them what I call bomb proof, you know, get them out and about as much as you can. But what's the breeder going to do um, before you collect your pup? Um, they should be talking to you about grooming and what the requirements and needs of the breed are. Um, and exactly what's going to be in your puppy pack. And I usually let them at that point, if, if we then decide to proceed, I usually send them a copy of the puppy pack written work so that they can read it and then they've got time to digest it and ask questions before the pup is actually collected. The breeder should then explain to you the contract of sale. So if you are going to have a pup, there will be a contract of sale and what's in that contract. And again, I normally email it so the new prospective owners can see what's in the contract of sale. And they should explain any endorsements the pup's going to have. So the two we have in the UK, when you register a pup, is it's not eligible for export and progeny is not eligible for registration. So in other words, you cannot breed from that pup and that should be explained at this meeting. Um, You can ask sort of what noises, what environment the pup's in, will the pup have been out in the car, how many different types of people will it have met, you know, old, young, etc, etc. And then the breeder should tell you all about the health side of um, what the pup's going to undergo. Um, so what vaccinations it's had and what type, because you need to check with your own vet that they do the same vaccination. What worming the pup's had, and that again, that should be included in the paperwork when you collect the pup. Um, will it have had any flea treatments? microchipping details they won't have been microchipped you can't microchip till the 10 weeks but and um, they should be reassuring you that the pup will be microchipped um and when they're going to undergo eye tests if the eye tests have been booked so a full explanation of the health of the pup and what it's going to go through by the time you collect it and, and what paperwork you will be getting with that and the breeders should make you feel assured that their interest is in the lifelong well-being of that pup and they should be saying to you, I'm here for any questions. So when you take the pup home, you know, let me know if you've got any problems. Feel free to pick up the phone and ask me anything at any point during this dog's life. You should feel reassured that if things don't work out, this breeder will take this pup back. It is their responsibility to find that pup good home. And you should feel reassured that that will happen. So at the end of this visit, if you're happy with the environment, you're happy with the health checks the breed is doing and, and the health of the pups and you feel like you want to proceed, this is the point where you should pay a deposit. Um, and, and not until you've met the breeder and not until the breeder's met you. But at this point, if both parties are happy, you should then be paying a deposit to the breeder. And for that deposit, you should get a receipt. Sorry, that's rogue, it's just not the camera. What are you doing? Uh, you should get a receipt. And you should all have, also have to fill in paperwork. The breeder needs to know your name, your address, your contact details, your email, uh, telephone numbers. And they need all this information in order to do your free insurance with the Kennel Club. Um, when you take collect a pup, you get five weeks free insurance and the breeder needs all that information. So be prepared to fill in some paperwork and then obtain a receipt for the deposit that you paid. So that's up to about seven weeks of life. And then you've got the last couple of weeks that are really exciting. You're waiting to collect your puppet. Um, and the breeder should then, between weeks eight and 10, just stay in touch with you, send you a few updates. You know, if you want a picture, don't be frightened to ask for a picture. Um, they should be happy to do that. Sometimes it might take them, you know, a day or two because pups are hard work and they are full on and it is intensive. So, you know, ask for a picture and just, just be patient. Don't expect it to be there within the hour or two. Um, but stay in touch with the breeder and the breeder should be staying in touch with you. Um, during the last two weeks, the pups will then have their microchips done and they'll have all the health testing completed. And if you want a second visit, you know, don't be frightened to ask, could you come and visit again? The breeder should welcome you with open arms if you want to visit again, uh, allow you to come back and see the, the litter, you know, in a couple of weeks it, when they've progressed a little bit. Um, and then at 10 weeks, it's time to collect your puppy. So you should have a 
10 weeks, you should expect to pay the outstanding balance for the pup. And as well as collecting your pup, you should take home enough food to see you through at least a week, if not two. I send enough food home for about a month to two months. Um, your puppy pack, so usually a bag that contains different items depending on what the breed, there may be toys in there, there might be puppy pads in there, um, but it should also include all the paperwork. So the paperwork should be your kennel club registration document, and that is a must have because without that you do not know that you've got um, a registered puppy, you know the paperwork is like its birth certificate. Um, copies of mum and dad's health certificates, the litter eye testing, a copy of the, the eye testing for the litter, the screening, so you should have a copy of that in there. You should have a vaccination record card so you can see what vaccinations have been started um, because usually the second vaccinations are due about 12 weeks. So you need to take that to your vets and arrange um, to have the follow-up vaccinations. You should have details of your five week free insurance from the kennel club or then maybe the breeder uses another insurance company as well, but you should have details of the free insurance. Um, and also your microchip details should be in the, um, I use pet log and to change your microchip over you need a transfer code to just check that all the information is in there in it to enable you to transfer that microchip into your name and then you're ready to take your puppy home. So lots happen in the first 10 weeks of life uh, and it's a really busy time although it feels like a long time for you to wait it is really full on and very very intense for the breeder. So I'll do a follow up video on taking your puppy home and uh, what to expect for your first few nights. Bye.